This is one of the laboratory exercises in our extensive library of laboratory exercises. Let's now take a deeper look at the data that we got from the dynamometer curve just now. Because we're measuring the torque and speed, we know the mechanical power, which can be drawn here. And we know the current and voltage, so we can, we can calculate the electrical power, which is shown here. What we see here is the ratio of the two. This is essentially the efficiency of the motor. We see that the motor peaks out with a maximum efficiency of about uh, 75% at a speed of about 2800 RPM. This data file comes from the dynamometer controller, which saves it to the computer. It's in a comma-separated variable type format, so it's very easy to analyze in Excel or any other program. The dynamometer controller allows several different methods of control of the motor. Obviously, there's the manual control mode, but we can also control it to maintain a constant speed, a constant torque to mimic the road load on a vehicle, or in this case, a remote control mode. That allows us to control the settings of the dynamometer controller and the power going to the motor from the computer. As an example, we'll spin up the motor. I'll 
clear the graph. And now what I'll do is I'll apply, say, 20% manual load by simply sending a command from the computer. Let's slow it down a little bit. Well, let's go to, say, 40% manual load. Now you can hear the motors slow down significantly. Um, we'll go up to, say, 60% manual load as sent from the computer. Additionally, we can control the power going to the motor. Currently, it's at 100% power. Let's drop it down to 80% power. And now you can hear the motor is basically stalling. Uh, we need to relieve some of the load, go back to about 20% to allow the motor to spin up. Now, controlling it from the computer alone isn't that interesting. The interesting part is now that we can control it from the computer, I can also run a batch file. I can send a series of commands and automatically control it. Now, when I click on the batch file, it's running a series of various different commands, applying, in this case, a manual load of 20%, a manual load of 40%, manual load of now 60%. Now this is taking place automatically. I can run this uh, automatically. It, it can go through various loops. Um, it can also vary the power going to the motor. So we saw that it manually increased the load. It's now decreased the power to 60% and it will go through a manual loop of load again. Not only can we control this from this computer, but we can also control it online. If, for example, a Polytech or University can't afford this equipment, what we can do is allow them access to the dynamometers online, where they have the same program running on their, on their computer um, and are accessing dynamometers at our centers here in Malaysia. What we see here is the DC motor version of the desktop dynamometer. In this case, it's a relatively high speed, low torque motor. It should operate at about 6,000 RPM. It's been instrumented with a temperature sensor, a thermistor, to measure the temperature of the motor. Additionally, we have a current clamp manager meter measuring the current going into the motor. The current to the motor is controlled by this universal power supply, which is controlled in turn by the throttle setting on the dynamometer controller. The current going to the coils is controlled by the load from the dynamometer controller and as we run more current into the coils that will slow the motor down increasing its torque tracing its motor trace torque curve so that's the experiment that we're about to do what we'll do is spin up the motor at about 50 percent power and it'll go to a high operating speed we will then increase the load on the motor tracing out the motor torque curve once we exceed a certain current We've set the alarm over here to shut off the current at about 15 amps. So when we get to about 15 amps, we'll shut the current to the motor off, protecting it. There is a circuit breaker in the universal power supply, but this is a little more elegant way to do it. So let's spin it up with about 50% power. Okay, we're at about 50% of our power. And we can see it's operating at relatively high speed, uh, about 6,000 RPM, which is the rate of speed of the motor. We'll clear this graph so that we can see it clearly. I'm now going to increase slowly the manual load going to the coils, which will load the motor, decreasing the speed and increasing the torque. And you can hear it slowing down. And what's happening is it's now tracing out the motor's torque curve. Current going to the motor is increasing quite quickly. We're at 10 amps already. And it's tracing out a nice diagonal straight torque curve, just like DC motor should. 14 amps. And we exceeded 15 amps, and it shut down, protecting the motor. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll decrease the load on it, clearing the state that caused the alarm. We will then reset the alarm, and it will spin back up again. As it spins up, we can see it traces out a nearly identical torque curve. The torque curve it's tracing out now is based solely on inertia. It's not loaded, it's just spinning up the inertia of the flywheel. And indeed, these two torque curves should match nicely. What we see here is the internal combustion engine version of the desktop dynamometer. It features a Honda GX35 four-stroke engine, and it has a servo motor on the throttle. The servo motor is operated 
from the universal power supply, taking the signal from the throttle command position from the dynamometer controller. The experiment we'll perform now will be to trace the wide open throttle torque curve of the engine. What I'll do first is start the engine and then gradually open the throttle to 100%. Once we're wide open the throttle, I'll gradually increase the load manually and what will happen is it'll trace out the motor's torque curve over here. Once the engine speed drops to about 4,000 RPM, the engine stalls. Started. Now I'm gradually opening the throttle. Seems to be cut off. and the engine stall. This is then the engine's characteristic torque curve, a very important aspect of any engine. Along with the dynamometer, the controller, and the software, we also give the universities and polytechs uh, an extensive library of laboratory exercises. Each laboratory exercise includes a purpose, a procedure, analysis, discussion, and questions. And as you can see, there's many, many laboratory exercises in here, investigating everything from efficiency to dynamics, thermal characteristics, inertial characteristics, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there's an extensive section on PID tuning, uh, tuning of a closed loop control system, because the dynamometer controller uh, features a closed loop control system on both speed and torque. In addition to the dynamometer, the controller, and the software, the desktop dynamometer comes with extensive teaching materials. There's five different classes that are covered. Here's an example of some of the teaching materials for control systems. Uh, of course, many of the laboratory exercises are oriented towards uh, lessons in the class itself, and sometimes we feature data from the experimental setup. Desktop dynamometer is also offered with a wide variety of optional equipment, some of which you see here. Of course, we have a wide variety of different dynamometer controllers in various packages. Uh, we also have extension data acquisition units allowing up to 16 additional channels of data acquisition in the same software. Obviously, there's the current clamp meter, which can measure both AC and DC currents. That's used on the AC and DC motors. Um, for internal combustion engines, we also have things such as the air-fuel ratio measurement system, which measures the air-fuel ratio of the engine. Uh, additionally, we have things such as fuel scales to allow you to measure the fuel consumption of the internal combustion engine. That, of course, allows us to back calculate the brake-specific fuel consumption or efficiency of the engine. The capabilities of this system is really much more than can be shown in such a short video. We have a library of over 60 laboratory exercises, as well as extensive teaching materials covering the classes of instrumentation, mechatronics, internal combustion engines, AC and DC motors, as well as controls. There's a long list of additional optional equipment which can come with the desktop dynamometer. So to buy, lease, or for remote access to the system, or for more information, such as to download our software or the manuals, please log on to www.focusappliedtechnologies.com.